Uh, let me uh, take a moment. I'd like to uh, take a, a little divergence here on this topic and broaden it a little bit. And I want to talk to you about autoimmune diseases because that's what multiple sclerosis is. All, all, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. It's where the body attacks itself. And because of the breakdown of the blood-brain barrier, things, are, things and those things are, are antibodies are allowed to get into the nervous system and attack parts of the nervous system called the myelin. But this happens with many, many other diseases, and that's why I want to make this a generalized discussion for you. Your gut, your gut is a uh, small intestine, is very long, let's see, it's probably about 20, about 20 feet long. And uh, to make absorption of nutrients uh, very effective, the, the intestine is folded uh, to, to give you a larger surface area. And these are called villi. You can see them under a microscope. This is just, this is the wall of the small intestine. And if you notice, these villi have one cell here coating all these villi, okay? And then after you, whatever it is in the gut, the stuff, food, whatever is in the gut, after it goes through this one cell, then it can get into the bloodstream. This cell layer is extremely important, and it's very smart. This, they, these cells are so smart that when you eat, it can determine that the proteins that you eat should be allowed to get into your body to provide for your protein needs. But the proteins you eat, like that are bacteria or viruses, it can tell those are bad proteins and it won't let them into your body, normally and naturally. It can discriminate amongst various kinds of proteins. But these cells are sm so smart. They, they determine uh, how many minerals get into your body. For example, if you eat a low calcium diet, there's no such thing as a too low calcium diet because no one has ever developed dietary calcium deficiency based on a natural low calcium diet. It's never happened. You eat a lower calcium diet, say uh, potatoes and rice and corn, and you skip the milk and the Tums. The, the, those cells just get, they get very smart. They know there's, there's something going on there. They know they've got to be more efficient. They just absorb more calcium. You do something stupid, like take a hands full of Tums and drink glassfuls of milk, those cells will block that calcium so it doesn't get into your bloodstream and doesn't calcify your soft tissues, like your heart and your kidneys and your muscles, and you die. That's how smart those cells are. That one cell layer. Those cells are so smart that if you develop iron deficiency anemia, they will know your body's deficient in, in, in iron, and it will increase the absorption of iron up to 20% of the iron you eat will now be absorbed because the body, those cells know the body needs more iron. Otherwise, if your iron's sufficient, those cells will not allow that iron into the body. If the iron got into the body at its own free will, it would uh, deposit in your kidneys, or excuse me, in your liver, in your spleen. You get hemosiderosis, and you die. You die from iron t intoxication. That's how smart those cells are. Life or death. What happens is this, is those cells get injured. They get injured by the foods that we eat. They get injured uh, by the drugs we take. They get injured by viruses. And what happens is a, a whole layer of these cells will be denuded, will be missing. And so you don't have cells to make this discrimination. And then what happens is substances can leak through into the bloodstream without, without the knowledge and the discrimination of these blood cells. This is called a leaky gut, a leaky gut. One of the more common ways to get a leaky gut is to take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, Advil, Motrin. You take these kinds of drugs on a regular basis, it can take up to four months to grow this, this barrier back. Of course, the standard treatment for autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis is to take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Yeah, okay. All right. Let me just kind of tell you how you might think about this. Remember drinking a hot beverage? You drink a hot beverage and uh, it kind of burns and you, you, kind of, you feel inside your mouth and, and you look in there and you go, oh, there's, it's just kind of red. Well, that's that one cell layer that's missing. They say it shouldn't be that painful. It's just a little hot cup of tea. It's very, very painful. It's that one cell that got denuded. So you've got these denuded patches all the way from the beginning of the intestinal system to the, to the end, but uh, primarily this is all taking, in, taking place in the small intestine. All right. So you, the first step in creating an autoimmune disease is to uh, destroy some of these cells by what we eat, 
viruses, toxins, drugs that we take, and so on. When foreign substances get into the bloodstream, this is the bloodstream right here. Foreign substances get in the bloodstream, the body attacks these foreign substances. Like, like virus coats. This is a virus. A virus coat. It attacks it, attacks it by the lymphocytes making antibodies, and this is how we represent antibodies. The lymphocytes make antibodies that attach to the protein coat, and then other cells become involved and kill this virus. That's you know, that's the life-saving mechanism of the body. Naturally, normally occurs when a virus or a bacteria got in here, the same thing. It would make these, the, the lymphocytes would make antibodies against the bacterial wall coat. And other cells would come in and attack and kill those foreign invaders. That's what's supposed to happen. These are foreign invaders invading proteins. Well, if you have a uh, leaky gut, in other words, that one cell layer has been destroyed in your gut, then proteins can get into your bloodstream that shouldn't be there. Uh, like, for example, beef protein can get in there. Uh, cow is not supposed to be running around in your bloodstream. And when the body sees cow running around in the bloodstream, what it says is this is a foreign substance. This, is, this, is a, uh, this could be a bacteria. This could be a, a, this could be a virus. I like, must make antibodies against it, and so it makes antibodies against the cow, against the cow beef protein. It happens with pork. It happens with uh, most animal foods. Well, it may happen with plant foods too, but it's not very rare, not very commonly. Even if it is, it's not really important, and I'll tell you why it's not important in a second. Uh, same thing with uh, milk products. Milk products are particularly notorious. The beta casein uh, uh, protein in cow's milk is, is very notorious for uh, causing these kinds of reactions where the beta casein from the milk leaks through, the leaky gut gets into the bloodstream, the body says, hey, this is a virus. I've got to make an antibody against it. All right, now here's where the problem comes. The body makes antibodies against beef, pork, dairy proteins. And these antibodies that it makes against these proteins, they find similar proteins in our body. The process is called molecular mimicry. Mimicry as in copy. They find similar proteins. Like, for example, this antibody attacks a segment on beta casein, 17 amino acids that we've identified. 17 amino acids on this beta casein. It takes, and this is like a key in a lock, it comes and attacks it. The milk protein uh, st stimulated that reaction because it's a foreign protein, it's not supposed to be in there. So it stimulated that reaction to cause the production of very specific antibodies that fit like a lock and key right into that section of beta casein. Milk is animal. Beef is animal. Pork is animal. People is animal. See? We have similar proteins in our body. So what happens is this. Is there are similar proteins that you would find on the beta casein molecule of the, uh, of the milk that are present in cells in the pancreas. This is the pancreas. And part of this pancreas is made up of cells called beta cells. These are insulin-producing cells. And as a result, when these foreign protein, or these antibodies are made against this foreign protein, beta casein, they find these same proteins, they say in this case, these same 17 amino acids on that pancreas, and they go and they attack that as if it were the cow's milk, the foreign substance. Molecular mimicry, mimicry, copy, copy. It's a copy found here that's also on the foreign protein, the milk. And so the antibodies attack to these insulin-producing cells, and they kill the cells. It, it takes about three to five years, in general, to kill enough cells in the pancreas so that the patient becomes type 1 diabetic. And by the way, type 1 diabetes is termed childhood diabetes, but actually half the people get this disease after the age of 18. So adults get type 1 diabetes, too. If, uh, you know, we're dealing with all kinds of problems. There are, all kinds of autoimmune diseases, and they work by a similar mechanism, molecular mimicry. Uh, there's problems like... Uh